We're going to go ahead and formally kick things off here. So welcome again to everyone. Uh, my name is Anthony Salas. I'm the Senior Manager of Events and Membership with Welcoming America. And on behalf of our entire staff, I want to thank you for joining us for this discussion on Welcoming Week 2021. We are very excited to uh, move into this part of the year that I know there's so much excitement and energy around. And so we're excited to, to talk with you about this today. Um, as I go through some quick housekeeping items, just keep that chat going. Let us know where you're joining from here. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and move into just a quick review of the agenda here. Um, so along with my co-presenters who I'm gonna introduce here shortly, uh, over the next hour, we're gonna share a lot of information, a lot of resources with you. Uh, so you see on your screen here, some of the things we're gonna go over. Uh, in a moment, we're gonna uh, do a couple of poll questions and ask you to engage in those. Uh, we're going to then define welcoming week or try to come up with a definition for this. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we'll introduce you to our theme for this year's Welcoming Week. Uh, we'll also then talk about the landing page and toolkit that'll be available to you, uh, along with some additional resources. And then we're gonna hear from a couple of our network members on their experience with Welcoming Week and um, setting everything up, putting the event on, all the good stuff that goes into that. And then we'll end it with some Q&A and we'll give you a chance to um, engage with us there as well. So um, we also are recording the webinar. Um, so all of this will be available to you after. Uh, in the next few days, we'll get this over to you as well as some of the resources and things that we're gonna be sharing here today. So as I said, um, I'm joined by some of my uh, colleagues here today, um, being joined by Cornelius Lewis, who is the Digital Engagement Manager with Welcoming America. Uh, and then our two uh, Welcoming Network members, Melly Arribas Douglas, who is the uh, Welcome TLC Librarian with Toledo Lucas County Public Library, and Erica De Leon, who is the Director from One Siouxland. And uh, we'll be hearing from all of them here shortly. So the first thing we're gonna do is, as I said, engage in a little bit of a poll question or a couple of poll questions. Um, and this is gonna be a good chance for us to kind of see um, what brings us all here today and where we stand in terms of kind of prepping for uh, welcoming week. So let me get my screen to work here. And hopefully everyone sees that on your screen now. So this is our first question here. Um, I wanna get a sense as to how long you've been involved with the welcoming week. So um, have you worked on events one to three years, three to five, five to seven, seven plus? This is your first year doing it. So we'll give this a few seconds um, for the results to come in. And pardon me looking away, I'm looking at my dual screen here. So um, watching the results coming in, this is really great. We've got a number of people coming in and responding. All right, gonna give it just a couple more seconds here. And then I'm gonna share the results so everyone can see this as well. All right, if you haven't responded, giving you three seconds, three, two, one, and close poll. Share the results. So I love this. The um, good chunk of everyone joining today, this is your first welcoming week. So welcome to welcoming week. <laughs> um, really glad you're here and um, there's gonna be a lot of info coming at you, but um, we're gonna to continue to communicate with you as the process goes on here. So don't, don't feel like you're on your own here. And I'm, I'm again, very glad that you're with us. Um, a good chunk as well, you know, the last few years you've been involved with this. Um, and then as you see too, we've got a few that have been with us for about seven years plus. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the history of Welcoming Week here in a moment. Um, and you'll get a good idea as to um, how that all started there. So we're gonna go ahead and stop with that. And we're gonna move into our second poll question here. And this just kind of takes into consideration where we were last year um, and where we're looking at kind of as we plan this year. So we know that COVID restrictions are changing, they're easing, um, you know, anticipating where they're gonna be come September is, is kind of a little bit of a challenge. So just wanna get a sense as to right now, uh, what is kind of your plan or your thinking in terms of the types of events that you're going to be putting on? So 
Um, is it going to be just uh, in person events? Are we going only virtual? Uh, will it be a mix or again, still unsure, which completely makes sense, I think, to, to many of us. So again, we'll give this a little bit of time, just a few more seconds here. And go ahead and close the polling. All right, so sharing the results there. So it looks like a good chunk of you are thinking about a mix, which um, is exciting to see this year. Uh, I know uh, probably a lot of you were doing virtual last year. I know we had some that were, were still doing some in-person events, um, but also still a little uncertainty there, which as I said, to me makes complete sense. Um, you know, we're all probably still watching things and learning uh, about where things are in our different locations. Uh, and these are definitely things to take into consideration as you start planning your events there. So thank you for um, sharing your um, thoughts around uh, those two poll questions there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and move into, and I'm moving too, fast, too quickly, um, going to move into our next section, which is um, defining welcoming week. And this is something that um, I know I've talked to a lot of my coworkers on, and we all have gotten this question in some way or another um, from many people. Uh, what is welcoming week? How do I learn more about welcoming week? Can you explain welcoming week to me? Um, and it, you know, it's one of those questions that it's, it's hard to define, but we're gonna do our best, hopefully help with that definition here today. But before I kind of go into that, uh, again, I wanna engage you in this as well. So go to your chat feature and let's take a few seconds. Um, when you hear welcoming week, in a word or two, enter in what comes to mind for you. And I know a lot of you, uh, this is new, and so you're here today to learn about that. But just think of those two words, welcoming week. What does that bring to mind? And so we're going to take a few seconds. Um, lots of good quite, uh, comments coming in here. So first thing I saw was belonging, uh, embrace unity, new people, fun, inclusion, celebration, embracing diversity, hospitality, inclusion and opportunity celebrating all the diverse ways we came to call this home. Love that. Celebrations and fairs, more than action or policy. Really cool. Togetherness, community, celebrating community. A lot of community, which is really cool. I love that. Multicultural events, making people feel like they belong. Friendly vibes, like that one. Events, programs to share and make other people feel comfortable. Learning about cultures. Having one's culture and identity feel seen. That's amazing, love that. These are amazing responses. Thank you all for doing this. Bridging the divide, affirmation. Wonderful, love all of this input. Keep them coming in here. This is really, really great. Um, I appreciate you all sharing this. And I, like I said, continue to do this. Um, now I'm gonna try and match you and see if I can help with a little bit of this and, uh, and talk a little bit about how we define Welcoming Week and how it came to be. Uh, so as I said, I wanna start with a little bit of a, a history on Welcoming Week. So uh, the first Welcoming Week that was held was held back in 2012. And on your screen, um, you see the, the logo that was used back then. Um, this was uh, a, a smaller event, obviously it was the first one. Uh, and the real goal of that was to galvanize the narrative uh, of communities embracing the value of becoming welcoming. And that first year was about 50 events that took place in a, somewhere around 20 states. Um, and altogether, they brought about 3,000 newcomers and longtime residents together. So for a first time event uh, or week of uh, welcoming week, it was pretty amazing. Um, today, it continues to grow. Every year, it's gotten bigger. Um, as you can probably kind of surmise, next year is going to be our 10th year anniversary of welcoming week. And that's pretty exciting that we've come this far with it. Um, I can share when I started with Welcoming America back in 2019. Um, we ended Welcoming Week with nearly 3,000 events that were 
uh, that took place not only in the US, but across the globe. And we continue to see that grow, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Um, even last year with the pandemic, um, you know, we, we didn't quite know what to expect, but yet everyone was really driven and wanted to make sure that Welcoming Week still happened. So it's pretty amazing to see how that all comes together. So events have been held uh, every year as this has gone on, and we've seen a lot of support come in uh, by national organizations and partners like the YMCA. Uh, I think a lot of uh, individuals from the Y are on with us today, so welcome to all of you. There's a woohoo from Trang. <laughs> um, so YMCA has been a huge, great sponsor for us and, and partner in uh, Welcoming Week. Uh, as well as all their locations across the country. But we've also seen uh, a big growing network of local partners that uh, more and more wanna become involved with Welcoming Week. Uh, we've also seen a real growth in the coverage by local and national media uh, who have really helped with uh, spreading that message uh, that we at Welcoming America really do believe um, and helps define what Welcoming Week is and that is communities everywhere embracing and celebrating the value of welcoming for all. So taking us back to that question of defining welcoming week. For me, I think it kind of goes to, is there one definition of welcoming week? And quite honestly, I don't think there is. I think um, there are multiple ways to define this. And what I do believe is that we can take into consideration all of these guiding practices, the values, the messages um, that we, we have as part of Welcoming Week and incorporate that with our individual participation and experience. Um, that's gonna then allow each of us to develop our own unique and personal definition of what Welcoming Week means to us as an individual. So for me, I can share that Welcoming Week is really a way to celebrate one another. Um, it's a way to embrace our diversities, uh, share our pride through art, through culture, through tradition, through education, through storytelling, and through conversation. These are all images from some of the events that have been held across the country in past years and speak to each one of those pieces that help define Welcoming Week. Um, Welcoming Week ultimately is a real chance for us to send a message that you are welcome here. So as mentioned earlier, the pandemic last year made Welcoming Week a little bit of a challenge. Um, we didn't know what to expect in terms of events um, we didn't know if there was really even going to be a welcoming week, um, but I will say many of you that are on that were part of it last year, you proved us wrong and you kicked, um, I'm not going to say it, you kicked, you know what, um, it was an amazing welcoming week last year. And um, so many of you reached out to us prior to welcoming week saying, how do we do this? What's going to happen? How is it going to go forward? Um, you adjusted, you made the changes you needed to make. Um, many of you went virtual, and that is something that we as an organization did as well. Um, we knew we wanted to do something that was gonna bring together as many people as possible. Um, and as a result, we put together the first Welcoming Week virtual kickoff event. Uh, we live streamed that via Facebook and YouTube. And again, we didn't know what to expect, but it was a huge success. Uh, it was very well received. Uh, we showcased member messages, music, dance. Uh, we had some wonderful storytelling happening um, and very exciting for our first as a Welcoming America event, we had a celebrity endorsement and that was, that was a big, big deal for us. We were very excited. Um, I'm excited also to share that coming up this year on September the 9th, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to hold the 2021 version of our virtual kickoff event. Uh, so it'll be our second one. And quite honestly, this is now going to be a part of our annual um, welcoming week tradition, if you will. Um, so we're gonna share more information about this with you soon. 
um, as well as how you can be a part of that kickoff event as well. So more to come on that. Um, but I want to pause for a moment here. And again, in the spirit of defining Welcoming Week, I want to play for you um, a replay the video that we closed out last year's Welcoming uh, Week kickoff event with, because it really beautifully outlines what this week, this Welcoming Week is all about. So I'm gonna stop share for a moment and we're gonna queue up a video here. Um, and this video will be, um, you'll be hearing from Emmy, Grammy, Tony, uh, award winner, Andre DeShields. Good afternoon. My name is Andre DeShields, and I'm speaking to you from my home in New York. And it is wonderful to join Welcoming America and kick off Welcoming Week 2020. I only recently learned about this work but what a revelation to know that there are so many people of all races, backgrounds and creeds working to make communities welcoming to everyone, including immigrants. When I think about this idea of being welcoming, I think about the extraordinary capacity within all of us to see each other's humanity and reject the judgment and assumptions that hold us back from living as equals. Welcoming is not about niceties. It is about pulling back the veil and seeing each other for who we really are and really can be. Life is too short too full of joy and wonder to spend it in fear, in shame, in judgment of our neighbors. Yet our history, especially this history we are just now beginning to confront through the important work of Black Lives Matter, of indigenous groups, of all people who have been labeled less than, this work is filled to the brim with stories of how racism and hatred for the other have used these fears to define who has access to being a full American citizen. This is a culture we must change. This work that each of you is doing to educate people, to change, the laws to change the way we interact with each other as a society means a great deal to me. I also know it can be stronger when you work with artists. This is a moment that calls for creativity, for envisioning something very different from what has been. The work of addressing racism, bigotry, and othering is work that needs to captivate us. We need a language to communicate across the absurd boundaries of them and us. And that language is the human language of art, culture, and storytelling. When I won my Tony Award for the musical Town during June 2019. I shared my personal rules, my cardinal rules of sustainability and longevity. And I would like to share them with you now. Cardinal rule number one, surround yourself with people whose eyes light up when they see you coming. Cardinal rule number two, slowly is the fastest way to get to where you want to be. And cardinal rule number three, the top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. So keep climbing. 
The work you are doing will take time, and you have committed to the long-term fight. I hope my rules on sustainability and longevity inspire you to keep moving. Good afternoon. All right. Who doesn't feel inspired now? <laughs> um, we, um, we've joked um, that we've watched this so many times and uh, it's just, it, it never fails to inspire. Um, so um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope that kind of helps with defining what Welcoming Week is to us and to so many of us. Um, but now we want to shift. We want to look forward and look at what 2021 is bringing uh, to us and what better, better way to start than to introduce our theme for 2021. And it's my honor to introduce you to our theme, which is Belonging Begins With Us. So as many of you know, this uh, campaign, Belonging Begins With Us, is uh, a campaign that was developed by the Ad Council and it was supported by uh, a broad coalition of organizations, including Welcoming America and the Center for Inclusion and Belonging at the American Immigration Council. Um, all of them were working together to foster a spirit of belonging all across the country. And internally, when we started having discussions on what theme would be the best for this year's Welcoming Week, uh, it wasn't difficult for us to agree that belonging begins with us uh, needed to be the theme because it aligns so perfectly with um, the theme of Welcoming Week. And uh, that includes the fact that we all know what it feels like to be excluded, to be isolated, to feel harassed, but we also know how to make others feel that they belong through the power that each one of us has to welcome others in our communities. So we're really excited to, um, to present you with this theme of this year and uh, the branding and all the stuff that goes with it. Um, and with that, I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Cornelius Lewis, uh, Welcoming America's Digital Engagement Manager. Uh, and he's gonna share a little bit more with you about the theme, uh, the landing pages and uh, the toolkit that's available to you. So Cornelius, over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, excuse me if I'm a little muffled. I came down with a cold yesterday. Uh, my name is Cornelius Lewis, and I'm the Digital Engagement Manager here at Welcoming America. And today I will be reviewing the landing page and toolkit, which has a lot of useful information for planning and promoting your Welcoming Week event. Uh, the landing page can be accessed, uh, like last year, at welcomingweek.org. It includes an overview of this year's theme, like Anthony just touched on, and details about the live stream virtual kickoff. Uh, forthcoming is an RSVP uh, button that we'll share on that, that you can RSVP uh, via Facebook or the YouTube video. Uh, could you jump to the next slide, please, Anthony? So the landing page also includes a number of ways to get involved. Uh, you can get Welcoming Week gear like t-shirts uh, or hats to celebrate. You can become a member or get certified welcoming if you're a local government. There's also a lot of social re media resources you'll need, whether you're promoting an event or celebrating it as an individual, which anybody can participate. You don't necessarily have to be a local government or a nonprofit uh, to, to participate in Welcoming Week. So the social media tools include logos, marketing strategies, Facebook filters, and Instagram stickers. So I want to take this minute to encourage you all to use the event hashtags. You can see them uh, behind me or on the slide in front of you. Welcoming week 2021 or hashtag belonging begins with us. And that's really what allows us to connect with each other during welcome week in the digital universe. So we strongly encourage you to use those hashtags. Uh, also on the landing page will be an event directory and map feature. This is something that we had uh, last year and this will feature all the different welcoming week events that are happening around the world. Last year we had over 465 events uh, listed on that directory and on the map. So if you wanna get that listed, 
you have to register your event. We're currently working on the registration form uh, and that should be launched pretty soon here. We will email everyone that link once the registration uh, form is available uh, and that should be forthcoming. If you can go to the next slide, Anthony, we'll talk a little bit about um, the registration form and what that will look like. It'll be very similar to last year. All events will be submitted via the Welcoming Week landing page, which is at welcomingweek.org. And you can find that link under the Get Involved section. Events like last year are not editable after submission by the user. So please make sure that you have as much of your event information available as possible before you input it. If you happen to input it and need to make changes, that's not an issue. We just have to do that for you. So just email. And if you have any other technical questions regarding the form or anything related to communications, you can email communications at, welcoming, at welcomingamerica.org. Uh, go on to the next slide, please. Uh, now we're gonna jump into the toolkit, which provides a really comprehensive uh, overview of how to promote uh, your event and how to engage with Welcoming Week 2021. Uh, so this can be accessed via the landing page under the Get Involved section as well. We'll send it in a follow-up email. It is available now. Uh, it should be dropping into the chat here momentarily. Uh, so you guys can kind of click and, and peruse that. Uh, in the toolkit, what you'll get is a deeper dive into this year's theme and talking points uh, as well to kind of position your event and how you approach marketing it. There's tons of information in there about event planning. There's guidance and considerations you should take because COVID-19 is still ongoing. Uh, there is information in there that you can use to plan a virtual event. Uh, we saw in the poll that many of you were uh, going to do virtual kind of hybrid events, which is what we expected this year. So it'll be a mix. So there's a lot of information that there's past event examples and ideas. Plus you'll hear some later at this webinar from these wonderful speakers uh, that will come after me. Uh, there's a great planning checklist. I encourage you to use that as you go through, uh, check all those boxes so that you make sure you're hitting all the marks and you're getting the most out of your event. Uh, additionally, there's a, a welcoming proclamation template. Many people celebrate by having a, a proclamation and we provide you with a template uh, to kind of stream like that streamline that and have some suggested language. So moving on to the communications component of the toolkit, this includes all the visual pieces associated with Welcoming Week 2021. That's logos, uh, the welcomer signs that many of you are familiar with, PowerPoint backgrounds, Zoom backgrounds, and social media graphics. Uh, in addition to all of those visual assets, we've provided you with templates for sharing uh, and suggested language uh, for all of the different social media platforms. Uh, and to round that out, there's a sample press release. It's kind of like a plug and play thing. You can push your event in there and your location and really try and drum up support with your local media uh, to try and, try and draw attention to the event and welcoming week. That's it for the communications toolkit and the landing page. I really appreciate y'all's time. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to communications at welcomingweek.org with anything related to the website uh, or the toolkit. We're here and happy to answer your questions. If you aren't already on our email list, please sign up. This is the best way to stay updated on all things Welcoming Week. Uh, and just a reminder to use those event hashtags. That's what's really gonna connect us and bring us together. Um, so I'm gonna throw it back to you, Anthony. Thank you all for your time. Awesome, thanks so much, Cornelius. Appreciate all of that info. Um, and as I said earlier too, we're gonna send out um, follow-up emails after this um, and we'll make sure that the links to the toolkit and everything is uh, part of that as well. But um, again, it is now on the website, so you can also go and check that out at any point if you'd like to. Um, kind of piggybacking on some of the information that Cornelius shared there. Just a few other resources uh, that I wanna bring to your attention uh, that you can consider um, in incorporating into uh, your planning for this year. Uh, the first one is our uh, online store. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, um, on our 
website, which um, is new this year. So if you've noticed, it's uh, been redone and, and looks amazing. But if you go to our um, web page in the upper right corner, you'll see online store. So you can click on it from there. Um, once you're in the, the store itself, you can either uh, go through a catalog or the collections. Uh, and Welcoming Week is one of those that you can go through. Um, on the screen here, you see some images of the different things that are available. Um, we've also incorporated some of the specific branding uh, for our theme for this year, as well as our general welcoming uh, week information as well. Um, you can receive a 10% discount on your purchases from now through October the 1st. Uh, when you go to the checkout, you just enter in the discount code welcoming week. So um, hopefully you can make note of that. Uh, and again, starting today through October 1, get a 10% discount, uh, buy all the pet bandanas, all the good stuff that's on there. So uh, enjoy that. And then um, another thing that some of you might be aware of that we've done this year, uh, we just published a cookbook. And the reasoning for this cookbook is to be used as a tool for, for building meaningful connections uh, across differences. And um, the cookbook, cookbook itself, when you uh, go through it, you'll see not only these amazing recipes, uh, but um, they come from different cultures uh, across the globe. Uh, you see the link on your screen right now. You can click on that and go to the, the site. Um, but in addition to the recipes, it also uh, lines up with a lot of activities that connect people around that shared table, uh, getting them to work together on a common goal. Um, if you're looking for some good ideas for Welcoming Week, uh, this cookbook kind of gives a lot of in-depth examples of programs and events that model how to bring people together. Uh, the models are a really great inspiration for all of these events and, you know, central to with food. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing to, to combine there. Um, so again, whether you're featuring, you know, considering featuring a cook-off between some local chefs, um, some sort of a restaurant hop, a um, couple of things that we've seen people done in the past around that, um, this cookbook is a really great way to kind of incorporate that, uh, really get people excited about food, about gathering, uh, about just being together. So uh, again, click on the link that you see there in the chat and you can learn more. Um, leave you with this great quote that's also uh, a part of the cookbook there. The other thing to uh, bring to your attention is our welcoming standard. And uh, we know that during welcoming week, we're going to have a lot of uh, great events happening, celebrations, activities, things of that sort. Um, but we also wanted to use this opportunity to kind of leverage uh, the public input um, as we are as an organization, uh, moving into our second draft of the welcoming standard. And to give you a little bit of background on this, uh, back in 2017, uh, we developed, uh, Welcoming America developed and published a nationally recognized and respected standard for local governments uh, that establishes clear and measurable requirements for community level immigration inclusion. Um, and through those policies and programs, the standard has really become the backbone of our certified welcoming program. Uh, and it's also used as a roadmap for communities that are seeking to become more welcoming. And we know that there are you know, new practices that come and the priorities shift. Um, so we know that the uh, standard is a document that's going to evolve. And um, so as part of that uh, commitment to staying up to date and staying fresh with, uh, with the times, we committed to revise or revisiting uh, the standard every five years. And this is one of those years uh, that we're doing that. Um, so in mid-August, we're going to start a um, public comment period uh, that's going to continue on um, into Welcoming Week as happening in September. Um, and during that time, what we're going to be doing is asking uh, partners to provide feedback through either some sort of a review or a short survey. Um, and that public input is so important to us. We especially want to hear from local communities about what local governments uh, can do and should be doing in creating more welcoming communities. So 
to that, we're going to follow up and um, make sure to uh, give you some ideas on ways that you can incorporate a welcoming standard review as part of your events, whether they be in person or virtual. So again, look for more on that. Um, we've also entered into the chat the link to the welcoming standard, so you can uh, visit that and learn more about it. Uh, if it's something that you're not familiar with and might be interested in. Um, and thank you, Cornelius. One thing that I failed to even put on a slide, and I shame on me, but Welcoming Week takes place September 10th through the 19th. Uh, that might be an important detail to put out there. Uh, we'll make sure we get that in our communications after this. Um, all right, so we are now going to move into um, what I think is a, the really cool part of this presentation, because we're going to hear from a couple of our network members um, who, again, have um, planned and executed some really amazing Welcoming Week events in the past years. And uh, for many of you, again, that are new to this, uh, we've seen questions on how do I get started, um, where do I begin, you know, what do I do? they're gonna be able to kind of give you some examples of things that they've done and what that experience was like for them. So first up for us, uh, I'm in, in very excited to introduce Melly Arribas Douglas. Uh, again, she's the uh, librarian with Welcoming TLC Toledo, Lucas County Public Library. So Melly, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Hi everyone, I'm excited to be here. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk about Welcoming Week. Um, I've got some suggestions on um, what we've done in the past, but these are all strategies that can be utilized year round and for other um, um, heritage months or even during Immigrant Heritage Month as well. So uh, next slide, please. Welcome TLC, Welcome Toledo Lucas County is an initiative that it was housed in the Board of uh, community, I'm sorry, the uh, Lucas County Commissioner's Office and in partnership with Local Initiative Support Corporation Toledo. Um, it has since moved and is housed now at the public library. And we like to say that we do three things. It celebrate our region's cultural diversity and immigrant heritage. We share data and local success stories and we convene and connect through our working committees and projects. Most of it is done in partnership with other organizations. Our steering committee is composed of about 15 um, individuals that are immigrants, refugees, and diverse community members and includes um, varying um, organizations. Um, next slide, please. Oh, okay, so this is one of our first welcoming potlucks and I was on the steering committee at the time, um, but I did not attend this one. So this was in 2017. Um, and again, it was in conjunction with other organizations. We partnered with other, other organizations. Um, so prior to the pandemic, yes, so 2017. So go ahead with the next slide, please. Um, so we partnered with other immigrant and refugee serving organizations in the area, including um, Adelante and Us Together um, and other organizations whose mission intersects with ours, such as Women of Toledo, to name a few. Um, go ahead with the next slide, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, can we go back? <laughs> okay. Um, so at the time when we were housed at the commissioner's offices, um, in order to you know, make our work more efficient, they were able to authorize uh, mini grants that were in the amount of $250. And these were made available for projects that aligned with our mission, including the welcoming potlucks. Okay, so the next slide. So in 2020 and at the onset of the pandemic, we celebrated Citizenship Day and National Welcome Week, Welcoming Week virtually. Um, with a proclamation that ended up getting some news coverage. Um, the proclamation was from the mayor of the city of Toledo. And one of my favorite parts in the proclamation stated, by fostering a welcoming environment for all, regardless of, of, of immigration status, race, ethnicity, place of origin, English language proficiency, religion, income, gender, sexual orientation, differing abilities, age, and other factors, we enhance Toledo, Ohio's health, economic prosperity, and well-being for current and future generations. 
So I love that part of the proclamation because sometimes it's important to remind ourselves and others why this work is important to the community and the proclamation um, is a good way to do that. So thank you for putting that in the toolkit too. Um, next slide, please. Um, we also partnered with uh, Women of Toledo and we joined their women's talking circle for a virtual conversation and session um, that explored the state of belonging and how we can create more welcoming communities. Um, the picture on the right, it shows you um, some books from our Steinem Sisters collection. Um, it's a feminist collection that's housed here at the library. We also co-hosted a talking circle with them, um, exploring what it means to create home together, which was last year's theme, and how immigration is a feminist issue. Um, at the time, news broke out about surgeries of migrant women at ICE detention facilities in Irwin County, Georgia, if you remember that. Um, so we made sure that that was a central part of our discussion. Okay, um, next slide, please. Okay, so this year we're doing a combination of in-person events and digital outreach. Um, and we're again, we're partnering with Women of Toledo for an in-person picnic. Um, and because Welcome Week, Welcoming Week falls on Hispanic Heritage Month, similar to our storytelling blog during Immigrant Heritage Month, you can see the image on the, on the very right. We're planning on partnering with the library's Latino um, Cultural Committee on a storytelling blog highlighting the contributions of our community members. We're also planning to release a pilot project uh, which provides 40 community members access to a mobile and digital English learning platform through Voxy and Gen, and that's the image that you see on the left. Um, and last but not least, um, we're hosting an in-person event um, with the Toledo Chamber of Commerce on a talent summit um, that's geared towards HR professionals. We were allotted one hour to present on the hour on, on the importance of belonging because it begins with us. Um, the mindset that you need in order to attract and retain international talent. So um, that's, I, I believe that's it. Wait, one more slide. And that's my contact information. Please feel free to reach out. Um, and good luck with your welcoming week event. Perfect. Thanks so much, Millie. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to leave this slide up here for just a moment. So if anyone might, wants to make note of this, um, appreciate all that information there, really, and y'all have done some really great events, so thanks for sharing about that. Um, we are now going to hear from our next um, member speaker, Erica De Leon, who is the director with One Siouxland. So, Erica, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, and thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, there was a question in the chat box that I'm um, curious about as well, Melly. So if you have a chance to answer it, it was about the liability that goes with a potluck. And if you had any challenge with that, because I'm curious, that was my first thought too, is how do you get by with that? So that would be great. I used to um, work with an organization that had potlucks among its immigrant students on a, at least a monthly basis. And it was everybody's favorite day of the month. So if there's a way to do more of those, I highly recommend it. Um, I'm Erica De Leon and I work in the Tri-State Siouxland region. Um, so I saw a comment about five cities doing uh, the same proclamation. And that's a great, great idea. I'm hoping our cities will do the same type of thing this year as well. Um, a few of the things I wanted to touch on are the best practices that we've used in growing welcoming week in our community. And what those are really around is, is um, getting everybody together and galvanizing your community so that if like what happens in our community this past year, one of the leaders of, of that work retires and no longer wants to do the heavy lifting that the work can continue. And there's still plenty of people involved to make sure welcoming week happens. So um, go ahead and jump to the next slide, please. Um, one of the things that we do, and this is just, you know, mostly my preference to not recreate the wheel and having done enough events for enough years, it's so much easier to grow an existing event than to start a new one and create a following. So we identified events that already happen in the community um, a lot during Welcoming Week. Uh, Welcoming Week conveniently spans over Citizenship Day and is also always right around the time of 
Mexico's Independence Day, as well as four other Central American countries that are represented in our area. So we already have similar types of opportunities in our community. We celebrate, um, we jump into those activities, add to them. Um, for example, our community has for a long time had a parade around uh, Mexico's Independence Day around the 15th, 16th of September. And so we added welcoming activities to that event and that's continued to grow and become more of an event for the entire community and not just those that celebrate that Independence Day. Um, we also uh, are creative with what we do and we target different populations. So sometimes events are, are geared more toward um, newcomer populations and celebrating, um, like I mentioned, with the parade. Other times the events are, are geared a little bit more toward the receiving community and helping them better understand the challenges, the struggles, and the cultures of the people that live in our community. Um, one of those examples is around Citizenship Day and, and um, we'll, we do citizenship um, the naturalization clinics where uh, attorneys volunteer to help with the actual application process. But we also have done citizenship, um, more like trivia events, where we um, have people who are US born citizens come to, we, we target them at these events and have them come and try to actually pass the citizenship test. Um, if you've ever done that before, you know it unfortunately <laughs> often doesn't happen unless they're high school students in government class. So it's always eye-opening for people to um, just sort of understand and be a little bit more empathetic about the struggles that people go through. We've also done the, we have an immigration simulation where people can um, sort of step into the shoes of an immigrant for a couple of hours and, and the simulation itself lasts an hour or two, but in simulation time, it might last 20 years. And so the goal of course, is for everybody to become a citizen by the end of the simulation. And usually if you've got 30 or 40 people in the simulation, maybe 10 of them will become citizens after the 20 year process, um, because you all know how difficult it is uh, to get through that process. So we've done things like that that are more about educating and, and encouraging people to be more empathetic and understand. Um, we also, as I know a lot of you have said in the, in the comments, welcoming happens year round, not just during welcoming week. So we aren't strict about sticking to the welcoming week dates. Um, we do uh, things throughout the month. We've, of course, there've been, our partners do things all year long, but um, we try to just mix it up. And like I said, look for other activities that are already happening and add into those. Um, I'm virtually going to, I'm just gonna answer instead of in the chat, there was a question about the simulation that I mentioned where you can step into the shoes of immigrants. Um, we actually created that. So I, um, Pablo, my, my contact information will be at the end of this. If you want to email me, I can connect you. I know there is also a board game that's very similar that um, our partner uh, Nebraska Appleseed has used before that I think, I don't know where they got it actually. I was kind of thinking it was a, a welcoming America tool, but I'm not positive about that. But I will help you find something that's similar. And you can go to the next slide. All right, and um, so one of the other things that we of course look at, and I know you guys are these people and do this as well, but really relying on those trusted leaders and key advocates in the community. Um, and sometimes those are the immigrant leaders, sometimes it's their immigration attorneys, um, other times it might be elected officials, uh, people in the school systems, but really working with them to have them engage in, in all of the events that are planned because if they're on board with the planning of it and excited about it, they'll tell other people and the turnout will be much better if they're part of that engagement and planning process. Um, and then of course, a team effort. I put several of the logos here. This is just um, logos from one year, I think it was 2019. Um, all of these partners were either hosting events or supporting um, some of the events that happened. And what's great about that is that I, I was trying to think back to the last time I actually was the organizer for an event and I don't remember, which just shows how great our partners are. So if any of my partners are on the, on the call right now, kudos to them because they do really do the heavy lifting. Um, and mostly they're direct service providers. They're, a lot of them are immigrants themselves, immigrant owned businesses. Um, and so they're fantastic about ideas and putting forth events and participating in, in those that others create. And it's really what makes it happen. Um, last year during 
COVID, it was really essential that those with the best social media presence or those who were still providing direct services were the ones that were leading the efforts and um, did a lot of the promotion of welcoming activities. So um, I highly encourage you to be as collaborative as you can all the time, but it really uh, pays dividends this time of year when you're trying to plan events and, and don't want to be the only one planning and promoting. Um, so as broad as you can cast your network and your partnership and um, and you start getting people together. Uh, we were actually just a, just about the time Anthony asked me to join this webinar is when I was emailing these all of these partners asking what they wanted to do this year and and they're starting to put the pieces together already. So don't hesitate to reach out to those you work with and start connecting them. Lots of um, lots of great opportunities. And I loved a lot of Melly's ideas. And I know the toolkit has a lot of great resources as well. And every year there's a welcoming week. There's more ideas to add to that for the next year. Thanks so much, Erica. A lot of good stuff there. Um, again, got to leave Erica's info up here for a moment. So if anyone wants to take note of that. Um, we've got a few minutes left here. Um, so I want to allow some time for questions. I know there's been some questions coming into the chat. Um, so I want to make sure to address those. Um, just a reminder to keep your questions coming. We're going to get to as many as uh, time does allow there. Um, but I know we touched briefly on uh, Alaric's question about um, potlucks and food um, and how to get around that liability issue um, with that. Um, if anyone wants to chime in, uh, I think Melly, um, Erica kind of mentioned you there, but I'll also share briefly. Um, I don't know if it's something that can be used or done in other places, but we uh, we did an event a few years back where uh, it was a kind of a festival. It was outdoors, <clears throat> excuse me, and we invited different vendors, um, food vendors to participate. And when we worked with the city uh, on the setup of that, one of the things that uh, we were asked to do was to make sure that each vendor had um, liability insurance and um, uh, their certificate was with them so we could then present it to the city. Um, so we had those, uh, we were able to provide it to them in advance um, electronically, but we also had it on hand at the event in case anyone came and wanted to see that. So um, again, I'm not sure if that applies uh, directly in, into that, uh, maybe that will help. Millie, I don't know if you have anything that you've experienced and want to add to that as well. Well, I wasn't part of the planning process during the potlucks, uh, but I can certainly reach out to some of the organizations and um, the commissioner's office and I can get back to folks. That sounds great. Thank you. Thanks. Um, a few other questions that uh, had been shared earlier too that I wanted to make sure to touch on because um, I came across in, in, from different people. Um, one was, is there a cost to participate in Welcoming Week? Um, there is no cost. So when you go to the page and uh, when we have the event registration page activated, um, there is no fee. Um, this is, you know, again, something that we invite you to be a part of uh, and, uh, and do within your own community, um, however best you can. Um, so there is no fee with that. But along that question, we also had another one saying, how much of a budget do I need um, to put on a welcoming week event? Again, uh, it's, it's gonna be unique to you know, your planning, what you are wanting to do, um, you know, and we know budgets are tight. Uh, this is a, a tough time for many of us right now. Um, so you know, it's what can you uh, put forth, uh, you know, what is your bandwidth on that? Um, I think in many, in many ways will help determine the type of event that you will put on there. Um, but I think as Erica mentioned too, um, you know, reaching out to other organizations and businesses that are in your community um, and letting them know what you might want to do. Uh, you can get sponsorships uh, you know, or, or partners that might be able to help out with that as well. So, um, and then the last two was, is there a specific timeline uh, for planning, executing events? Uh, again, dependent on what you're doing. Um, I think a lot of you have already started the planning. Uh, I know I've received some emails from people asking, when's the toolkit coming out? And uh, that was like a month ago. So, uh, you know, that planning starts and I don't even know that it stops, <laughs> to be honest. I think it's a, something that we're all thinking about 
uh, even after welcoming weekends, we're starting to think about next year. So um, it really depends on the, the breadth of your event or events that you're planning. Um, so again, I would, you know, again, as Belly said, she wasn't part of the planning, but she knows the planning that goes into it. So depending on how big your event or events are gonna be, um, you know, is it just you to do it or do you need a team of individuals to kind of help you? I would encourage a team, um, but uh, yeah, it, it all depends on each, each person in each location there. So um, Cornelius, did you have something you wanted to add to that? Yeah, just one more reminder. I just wanted to plug uh, those hashtags, use them. That's how we really, kind of unite and get together on this uh, in the digital universe. And uh, I can't really stress how important it is to register those events. Once we have the event registration form open, we'll email it to you all uh, and and ha have those events registered. Um, it's just, it's a great thing to have so that we can track and, and, and really know what's happening for Welcoming Week. Excellent, thank you both. All right, well, again, I know we didn't have a whole lot of time for a lot of questions. Um, I will um, promise you though, for those of you that entered some questions that we weren't able to get to, uh, I will follow up with you. So I'm gonna keep a track of the chat because um, some of you, I know, again, this is new. So I wanna make sure that we are helping you uh, get everything started. So look for follow up on that later. Um, to that point, um, if you do continue to have questions after we're done here, two different ways you can contact us. So if you have just some general questions about Welcoming Week itself, um, you can send an email to events at welcomingamerica.org uh, and I'll respond to you there. If you have any questions around the website or the resources, the toolkit, things of that sort, um, you can send an email to communications uh, at welcomingamerica.org there. So uh, another quick reminder, all of this is being recorded. We're gonna share this with you. Uh, along with everything that was shared uh, during this time. And again, when the uh, event registration form is uh, live, we'll be sure and let you know there too. Um, this will be a great way for you to showcase what you're doing and uh, allow others to see what you're doing or what is happening in their area. So we really encourage you to make sure you add that. Uh, again, we also really want to support you. So reach out to us, whether it be myself, um, those of you that are network members, reach out to your regional managers. Um, as an organization, we are here to support you in your efforts uh, as you go forward and plan a welcoming week. Uh, and as Melly and Erica both said, this is not something that just happens during this one week. We know welcoming, um, the act of you know really putting this forth, is something that happens every single day. Uh, we know that it even happens in times when you know, we're in some difficult times in our country or in, in the world. Um, that work never stops. And one thing I do want to say on behalf of our organization is thank you for all of the work that you all are doing. Um, and I encourage you, while you're celebrating Welcoming Week, take a moment and celebrate yourselves, your organizations, all the great work that you all are doing. Um, because if it wasn't for you all, this, none of this would be possible, and we recognize that, and we want to honor you as well. So thank you all so much for not only being with us here today, uh, but again, for all of the great work that you're doing. Um, we are excited to see all the events that you're going to plan and execute uh, during Welcoming Week, and keep sharing with us. Let us know how it goes. Let us know, you know, great stories that come from that. Um, it's, it's an inspiration to all of us. So Thank you all again. Thank you, Cornelius, Melly, and Erica. And uh, we will see you all very soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you.